Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM Extended Model for today's second video. So this is your uh, 30 day look at for the UK and the rest of Europe as well. Actually, we'll extend out to uh, weeks 5 and 6 as well, so it's going to be like a 42 day, 6 weeks look at. But uh, traditionally, it always used to be a 30 day uh, look at. And I shall get on with that for you very shortly. Just say that the first video we say was our 7 a.m. Uh, forecast. And we've also got a 10 to 14 day with all of the regular features coming up for you later on this afternoon. Please like, share, subscribe on all of Video. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. We released part two of the uh, first winter update last night, and uh, it was a pretty interesting one. So, if you're not seen that yet, check it out. Uh, right, okay, let's have a look at the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly then. Uh, this takes us through the uh, current week, uh, which is going to be of the week starting. Uh, from the 6th of uh, September to the 13th. Uh, right, so uh, most parts of Eastern Europe are dominated by high pressure in the week ahead, uh, or during this coming week, I suppose, or the week we're currently in. Uh, we've also got high pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland. There's low pressure in over Scandinavia, and there's some low pressure across western, southwestern parts of Europe. It's a messy old pattern, but basically we're drawing up a lot of warm air up the western side uh, of Europe between the low pressure here and the high pressure there, we bring up lots of very warm air uh, from the south. This trough brings some slightly cooler air into the far north of uh, Europe, I think. This is how the 500 millibar height anomaly is looking uh, for week one. So again, this will be taking us from the uh, 6th to 13th of September. So we have above average heights uh, through the North Atlantic into uh, western parts of Europe, below average heights into far north Scandinavia and northeastern Europe, northwestern Russia. Top of low pressure is down here as well. So again, quite a messy pa pattern in weekend, but basically much of northwest Europe dominated uh, by that area of higher pressure above average heights. Right, this is week one temperature anomaly, uh, proper east west split uh, across Europe. So in the far north, northeast and eastern part of Europe it is cooler than average with below average temperatures anywhere from uh, like uh, eastern Germany through to Black Sea and also across all parts of Scandinavia. Western and some into some central parts of uh, Europe and the central med uh, much warmer than average, hotter than average in much of uh, southern Scandinavia into the UK, into France, down into north parts of Spain as well on the temperature scale. We're around three to six degrees above average so very significantly hotter than average in the western part of Europe uh, this week cooler over on the east side of Europe. We see that in the Med as well. So anywhere from Italy westwards, generally warmer than average, hotter than average weekend. Uh, from southern Italy through to Greece and Turkey, uh, below average temperatures. Uh, precipitation wise look like that. A lot of dry weather to come in the uh, weekend with uh, some variation in specific areas. So uh, it's a little bit wetter than average through central parts of uh, Norway and Sweden for example. A little bit above average rainfall in the far northeast of Europe as well. Uh, Portugal looks rather wet, especially northern parts of uh, Portugal and northwestern Spain, but the rest of Spain generally dry. A large bit of France is uh, wetter than average, especially those southern and western areas. I mean, down here, south of Italy, again, looking quite wet uh, through there. But as I say, they're the exceptions to the rule, otherwise it's quite dry. So uh, much of eastern and southeastern Europe looking dry than average. I mean, a large swathe of dry than average weather uh, right way from Ireland all the way over to uh, western parts of Russia in the week ahead. Right, we move through to week two, it's going to be the 13th to 20th of September, and we look like this, so high pressure is uh, in over Scandinavia then, got an area of high pressure over Scandi, uh, otherwise just generally quite low pressure really uh, in this week across much of uh, Europe, especially southern and western and southwestern parts of Europe. The week uh, two 500 millibar height only looks like that, but a different to mean sea level pressure actually, with a larger area of above average heights, not only over Scandinavia, but also back into Ireland, the UK, the Low Countries, northern parts of Germany, even with below average heights rather further south. So they look a little bit different, don't they, between the 500 millibar heights uh, and the mean sea level pressure anomaly. Anyway, the temperature anomaly for uh, week two looks like that. So still generally warm and average through this western, northwestern part of uh, Europe. So uh, much of France into the UK and Ireland, uh, warm and average through there. Northeastern Europe, cooler than average, uh, quite uh, warm through the central and eastern areas. So again, much of the Med looks pretty warm. Uh, Adriatic, uh, Adriatic looks warm. Balkans uh, looking warmer than average too. Remember, Black Sea is a little bit cooler than average. And towards Greece, 
Greece. It's perhaps a little bit cooler uh, through there than average. Spain also coming out a little bit below average with temperature. So varying from area uh, to area, but uh, but generally quite warm still in the western northwest and cooler in the eastern and northeast. Much of southern Europe looks quite warm. And precipitation-wise, uh, for a week or two, we look like that. Uh, it's wetter than average in the southern and southwestern parts of Europe and drier than average through these northern and northwestern parts of Europe, but also down the eastern side uh, of Europe. It's a little bit drier than average uh, through there. So you can see where the high pressure and low pressure is. High pressure is around here, uh, and the low pressure, obviously, is going to be uh, down there. Right, week three can take us from the 20th, 27th of September. So still hinting up we have that Scandinavian high. Uh, it is weakening, but it's still there over Scandinavia. Otherwise, there's not much going on from the mean sea level pressure uh, anomaly perspective. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar heights. And still that ridge goes on across the western and northwest. This will be an exceptionally dry September for uh, much of northern and northwestern Europe if this comes off with that uh, area of high pressure just going nowhere fast really low pressure in the far northeast you're opening to northwestern parts of russia and otherwise not much else happening the week three uh temperature anomaly uh no real changes again very warm for western northwestern parts of europe this will be a notably hot september and dry september as well uh, for, for the UK and for Ireland, I have to say. Uh, it might be one of the driest and warmest Septembers on record. We'll have to wait and see about that. But certainly exceptional, uh, really, in terms of the persistence of high pressure above average temperatures. And obviously going to be dry uh, as well. It is a little bit below average temperature on the extreme northwest, northeast of Europe, I should say, and west part of Russia. And again, we have the central parts of Mediterranean looking rather warm and average. Otherwise, most areas, there's not all that much of a signal for temperature and precipitation-wise in week three. The signals are weakening, but generally it still looks pretty dry over Scandinavia. You'd expect that, I think, to extend into the UK and Ireland wet in the middle of the Atlantic, but that precipitation is going nowhere fast. And then southern parts of Europe, around North Africa, south of Spain, and also around Greece and Turkey. It's a little bit on the drive and average side through there. And then week four will be the 27th of September to the 4th of October. We look like that. So uh, maybe hinting at a little bit of a return of westerlies uh, with this week. So some higher pressure down towards Spain and back into the Azores. So that's like typical placement for the ridge of high pressure. Lower pressure around Greenland and Iceland. We might be starting to see signs of a little bit of a return of a westerly flow uh, as we get through there. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar. Height anomaly, still not really actually, still not really, still hinting. I um, mean, got above average heights down here across southern and southwest Europe, and above average heights just to the west of uh, of Ireland. UK. It's probably going to be a trough through there. Therefore, I would have thought. Um, but again, still a lot of high pressure, particularly for western parts of Europe. The temperature anomaly looks like that. Still hints of being rather warm and average on the western side of Europe. Not quite as warm, but generally still above average with those temperature anomalies through most of western Europe. The far east of Europe looking cooler. Uh, again, running down this east side of Europe. And in between, this white area is sort of near normal with the temperature anomaly. And the uh, week four precipitation anomaly. Again, weakening signals, which is southern Europe looking quite dry. Perhaps seems to get being a little bit wetter through Scandinavia, but again, it is a really, really weak signal. Right, so uh, that's the four-week look at, uh, 30 day look at. Let's have a look at weeks five and six before we go, because why not? So this is the mean cell pressure anomaly for uh, week five, which will be the 4th to the 11th of October. Uh, you've guessed it, quite a bit of high pressure being hinted at for most parts of uh, Western uh, and also some southern parts of Europe as well. Not much sign of low pressure anywhere. And 500 millibar height still has that area of high pressure in over the UK. And this is very good for the gas weather well, this autumn forecast, which did suggest a very anti cyclonic sort of September and October with loads and loads of dry weather so uh, so pretty good for that side of things temperature anomalies are still really warm and average across western parts of Europe cool and average across eastern parts of Europe and precipitation anomalies week five it's a weak signal but you'd expect most areas particularly in southern and western Europe to be quite dry and then uh, week six which is the 11th to the 18th of October Looks like that for the mean cell pressure anomaly. And overall still hinting at quite a lot of high pressure across many parts of Europe with all this high pressure ever 
go away. I wonder. This is how the uh, week six, 500 middle bar high to is looking again. Lots of above average heights across Western Europe. Perhaps seems to get it's pulling out into the Atlantic a little bit more, which if nothing else possibly turns Scandinavia colder as the jet stream begins to dig northwest to southeast. Um, but uh, but for uh, like the West Europe, for France, for the Low Countries, for the UK, for Ireland, we're still under the ridge of high pressure, even six weeks uh, in in the future. And precipitation wise, uh, temperature wise, I should say, it's uh, it's still warmer than average overall for the West side of Europe. It's cooler than average over on the eastern side of Europe. And the uh, precipitation anomaly uh, for week six, which is again the 11th to 18th of October. It's a very weak signal by this point, but you don't expect much of Western Europe to be reasonably dry, and perhaps Northern and Eastern Europe to be a little bit wetter. Right, so high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, all the way, all the way, all the way over the next six weeks for many parts of uh, Europe. <laughs> we're going to be struggling for things to uh, discuss, but it will get more and more interesting as we go along, because of course the uh, what we get from high pressure, you know, as we transition through the autumn, will, will change. So at the moment, it gives lots of dry uh, and uh, and warm weather. It will still give dry weather, but the temperature overall will have to start coming down, you know, as we transition and the nights get longer and longer. Uh, and whatnot, and so with time we'll see more in way of mist, fog, and possibly by the middle of October, if this high pressure is still going on even then, um, possibly by then, you know, night frost, fog, and that sort of thing, uh, particularly across central parts uh, uh, of the landmass of Europe. So, uh, so yeah, it will start to get a little bit more interesting, even if the high pressure does carry on for six weeks, as the ECN is hinting at, you know, uh, on this update. Of course, it could all change, like, uh, on on the flip of the coin, you know. So, on Friday, might be low pressure all the way. Just never know. Any forecast beyond five, seven days is fraught with uh, danger and comes with big health warnings. So, uh, so it's just a snapshot of what this model is showing today. And uh, we should wait and see what it shows when we look at it again, actually, on uh, Friday or Saturday, when we uh, focus specifically on uh, the UK and on Ireland too. Right, so uh, that's it for your six weeks, uh, 30 days, slash six weeks. So again, uh, with the ECM, we're going to be out later on with the 10 to 14 day. That's going to include all the regular features, so come back for that then. For this one, though, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.